Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include French debt to hit nearly 2 trillion euros. EU calls on Russia to stop extra border checks from Lithuania. European Union probes hydropower contracts amid French battle over tendering. Plus, the EU clears Morange diamonds. And Finland predicts breach of EU debt limit as deficit persists. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. France's public debt is expected to hit nearly €2 trillion Euros by the end of 2014, or 95.1% of GDP, far higher than previous government estimates, Le Figaro Daily reported. The revelation came as France's public auditor warned that the spiral of social debt, referring to the country's generous health care, family and pension schemes, which contribute to its overspending, was abnormal and particularly dangerous. Previously, the government had said France's overall public spending would stand at 94.3% of gross domestic product next year. At the end of 2012, the debt amounted to 90.2% of GDP, and the new figure will be a rise of more than €120 billion Euros over two years, according to Le Figaro's report. European Union rules require public debt to be no more than 60% of GDP or falling towards this ratio. I don't think I even need to comment on this one. The numbers speak for themselves. The European Commission called on Russia to stop supplementary border checks on Lithuanian truckers and passenger cars imposed in the last month as the countries spar over trade relations with the Ukraine. Russia and the European Union, of which Lithuania holds the rotating presidency, are each trying to convince Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine to join their respective trade blocs. Russia last week introduced lengthy extra checks on trucks and goods originating from Lithuania, a former Soviet republic which has a large trucking and warehousing industry due to its strategic location between Russia and the EU. Well, more trouble at mill as the posturing between the European Union and the Eurasian Union continues. Watch this space. We'll keep you posted as it hots up. The European Union is investigating how hydropower contracts are awarded in countries such as France and Portugal, where projects are operated by state-run companies. The European Commission, the EU's Brussels-based executive arm, requested preliminary information from some countries and will begin a probe into contracts granted to Energias de Portugal in 2007, it said today in an emailed statement. The EU action means it's weighing in on a controversy over French government plans to put hydropower concessions that are mostly held by state-run Electricité de France out to tender. French Energy Minister Philippe Martin defended the proposals last night after opposition within the ruling Socialist Party. Here we go, folks. More illegal state aid regulation enforcement in the pipeline. Zimbabwe could soon be allowed to sell diamonds from Morange in Europe after sanctions on the Zimbabwe Mining Development Corporation were lifted. The ZMDC holds a 50% stake in several mining operations in Morange on behalf of the Zimbabwe government, but the company had been blacklisted under European Union sanctions. The European Union said that the company would be removed from the sanctions despite concerns over alleged fraud in a July election that kept President Robert Mugabe in power. I don't know what to say here. In the EU, you can't run an energy company with even a whiff of state funding. But what if you're running a diamond mine in a dictatorship with an atrocious human rights record? 
well, if you're in Africa and we want access to your natural resources, well then, Robert Mugabe, come on down with those diamonds. The price is right. I keep repeating this, but the EU will overlook many travesties in Africa because it absolutely must secure those primary and secondary resources. Ah, how Le Bon Federation speaks with forked tongue. Finland's government said its debt will rise to 60.7% of gross domestic products next year as slow economic growth pushes the northernmost euro member past debt limits allowed in the common currency bloc. The AAA-rated nation's ability to expand will be limited as the turmoil of the past years in its key industries has wiped out capacity, the government said in a 2014 budget documents released in Helsinki. Other countries in breach of the 60% debt limit specified in the Treaty of Maastricht include Spain, Germany and the Netherlands. Well, it looks like the EU is going to need a bigger handcart. It's OK to coin the phrase going to hell in a handcart, but the way things are developing, it doesn't look like they're all going to fit in. Today in our video library... Back on the financial soapbox again today, I'm afraid, folks. Check out this video of Max Kaiser laying out the Cameron Help to Buy scheme. I really wanted to jump on this straight away and highlight the issues. So, Chairman Cameron has announced that the government's Help to Buy scheme is to start next week, three months ahead of schedule. Now, this is notwithstanding the massive relaxing of planning laws earlier in the year as the Lib-Con alliance looks to stimulate growth in the housing market. Sounds like a good idea, right? Well, sadly not. The Help to Buy scheme is in essence a loan guarantee scheme from the government to enable people to overreach themselves when the banks will not. I was talking with Dr Eric Edmund last week and he used the term subprime lending in a different box. But it gets worse. El Donde Cameroni is either completely off his bonds or his agenda is different to the one he publicly espouses. The let's print money and buy our own bonds scam and this new help to buy Ponzi scheme are complete folly. A GCSE maths student can highlight the poor arithmetic. Are you really telling me that advisers to Club Cameron Osborne haven't fully informed our glorious leaders of the folly of their scheme? Friends, they're lying through their teeth. They know they're inflating the housing bubble, but they don't care because they reckon it will buy them votes. This rubbish about an in-out referendum, the stalling. They know that a broken economy and a country stuck in the EU tar baby by fiscal and political union will happen before they hold the referendum. And so it will be a moot point when it does happen. Strong words and speculation? Sure, I realise that. But let's face it, when you think about it, have they given you any evidence to believe anything else? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.